talk about the stereotypes. I know that <laughs> um, we always laugh about this, right? And, and how there's just this Wolf of Wall Street stereotype <laughs> that's attributed to people in finance um, and how they've got to be mean and they've got to be, you know, uh, hmm, selfish and, and just be this alpha male and they've got to use words like dabble and tobacco. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe you can. I mean, you're in, you're in investment banking, like you're in finance. So have you have you actually seen these stereotypes come to life? Uh, so I actually thought a good amount about this, and I've talked to a number of people, both in and, and not in, in finance, and I've been very positively surprised time and time again. I mean, I've had the opportunity to meet a number of incredibly brilliant, talented, humble individuals that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be branded with the investment banker title, such that my perspe perception rather of, um, of the stereotypes that exist has been changed and I mean, that, that's not necessarily something that you would initially think of when, when you conceptualize an investment banker, at least, you know, from the perception of the media or, or from movies like, like you know, yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> um, but I think a number of us have found that, that, that those stereotypes are often very exaggerated and, and in more cases than not are completely false. That's interesting. Um, in, maybe you can talk about also the emotional aspect, like I, I know that speaking to a few people in, in the industry, um, they have opinions about like males versus females in the workplace and like how gender specific sometimes uh, the attitudes can be. So do you feel as though it's harder to be a girl in, in investment banking? Like uh, do, you, do you think that it has to do with like being more emotional and is that like not true at all? Uh, have you heard about these like stereotypes? Um, how do you respond to, to those stereotypes? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely true that there are certain qualities that are associated with females and certain qualities associated with males, but I by no means believe that any of those qualities are necessarily dis disadvantageous mm -hmm. in that you have firms that are becoming increasingly globalized and, and clients that are more and more diverse such that firms that have diverse employees often do very well. I mean, I think there are instances where, you know, having a more sensitive female banker could actually work well and, and that, that relationship could be cultivated very organically between the client and, and the banker, for example. Mm -hmm. Whereas there's other relationships that, you know, are, are fostered in very different different uh, instances and different environments. Um, but the moral of the story, at least from my, my limited experience, is that having a diverse set of employees, both in terms of gender as well as other qualities, really makes for a strong team and I think enables you to best meet diverse needs of your clients. Okay. So in relation to networking, there are um, there, there is talk of, of how gender tends to uh, be a factor when, when networking. So uh, males will sometimes network in, in a way that's quite different from females and I, I've learned this more throughout my research on, on YouTube and watching uh, entrepreneurship talks uh, with, with female leaders. And uh, there, there are comments about how men, for example, will tend to network by like the buddy system. I try to call it like, you know, this buddy system where uh, they're so inclined to help, to, to maybe helping a fellow uh, friend or like a bro or a guy, right? Um, that they may not know all too well, but They'll, they'll go the extra mile for that guy. Um, whereas women, the way that we network may not be so friendly, it may be more competitive. And um, I, I don't know if you've ever had to come across that. What do you see in the market? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say that, that, I wouldn't jump to the conclusion that a guy would be more willing to help you know a, a friend's brother than a friend's sister, let's say. But I definitely recognize that there is a different dynamic in the way that men network and the way that females network. Um, that being said, I think the dynamic and, and the whole networking scene, so to speak, is changing as you're getting you know, more and more women in, in fields and in positions of seniority such that there are now those female counterparts that you can reach out to. I mean, there now are those mentors that you can look up to and, and you know, have those meaningful conversations with, whereas in the past, I don't think there were as many people of the same gender, if you were a female, that you could reach out to and, and try and network and cultivate a relationship with. Okay, yeah, that's great. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I know that there is a blog out there. I don't know if you've ever read it. And uh, yeah, it's about like investment banker girlfriends and, and these 
women who are not in finance and not in banking, so they don't really understand um, that industry and stereotypes do come alive where it's like, oh, you know, my baker boyfriend works 100 hours and like, oh, he um, forgets about me. <laughs> he forgets about me and he's emotionally unavailable, but like, I still love him, but should I date him? And, like, is it normal? Like, should I not text him? Am I needy? You know? I mean, so, like, How <laughs> crazy is it that there's a blog about this? It beats me. <laughs> um, so I I'm actually dating a banker. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm actually dating someone who was an intern in banking and okay. be becoming full time. Um, so we'll see how that goes once we once we start full time. But my perception might be a little bit biased in that my summer internship experience was as crazy hour wise. Right, yeah. But I also think some of that has to do with the stereotypes as well. I mean, mm -hmm. sure, you're you're probably involved with someone who who's incredibly busy, who's likely somewhat stressed. But I, I think there is, in certain cases, some level of exaggeration. Yeah. Um, I mean, it obviously depends on each individual relationship, but from my experience, it's totally doable. There's a ton of really sweet guys in banking, okay, and by good. no means can you, you know, put them into <laughs> a don't touch box just because of their okay. um, <laughs> occupational background. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> what would you, what advice could you give to the younger viewers looking to maybe, um, to go into investment making or finance, uh, and this could be related to your own experience, like what would you have told your younger self? Mm -hmm. So I think what I would have told my younger self would be simply to, to go for it. I mean, looking back in hindsight, I am so glad that I pursued what I was excited about, as I, as I mentioned before, and definitely realized that had I chosen not to interview for HIM, even though I was super scared, or have it, had I chosen not to recruit, I definitely would have hands down regretted that for years to come and, and I would have ended up being my biggest enemy, you know, in that I would have been the largest hindrance. So I, I think my piece of advice, especially if you're you're on the, the fence about pursuing something out of or not pursuing something rather out of fear would simply be to have that, that healthy level of self confidence, to to know your strengths, know your weaknesses and, and be comfortable by a comfortable rather in asserting yourself and, and just pursuing like what you're excited about. Awesome. That is a great way to, to end it and very poetic as well. So <laughs> thank you so much, Megan, for, for coming on the show and uh, um, cheers to our viewers. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for watching The Corporate Diary and we're going to say farewell to Megan. Bye, everyone. Thanks for having me.